Hello, I'm Stuart Preston, and this is the Stoned Ape Report, where I have conversations with those who have changed their lives with the help of psychedelics. In this episode, I had the honor of speaking with Michael Cooley. Mike served our country in the Army's military police and was deployed three times, once to Afghanistan and twice to Iraq. After he returned, he soon started experiencing severe PTSD, watching that affect his kids and his marriage. His story was part of the documentary film, From Shock to Awe. We talked about the power of psychedelics to rediscover love and the meaning of life, and how his journeys with ayahuasca, mushrooms, and 5-MeO really helped turn things around for him. So let's hear from Mike. All right, Mike. Well, thank you so much for joining me here on the Stone Ape Report. It's, it's an honor to have you. You know, I think a lot of people out there may or may not know, you know, your story from, you know, your experience and, and being part of that documentary from Shock to Awe, which, you know, anybody out there who hasn't seen that, you need to go see it. Uh, there's a link to it here on the podcast. Go go watch it, buy it, make a donation, help those people out because it's a really powerful story. But for those who have not seen this documentary uh, obviously this this podcast is really about you know what what were you dealing with in life your challenges and how did psychedelics help and what was the outcome so maybe maybe tell us a little bit about your story and what what challenges you were having and your your experience and what what led you to psychedelics oh absolutely absolutely well thank you first for having me on on your podcast i really appreciate it definitely uh, i'm in being able to to get this word out to you know those that need to hear it um and uh boy well uh i was i was just about two years out of the military medically retired um i had been a medical cannabis patient um for for those two years, um, from from basically the day that I got my DD two fourteen, uh, I started uh, trying cannabis as a medicine uh, to help treat what I already knew was PTSD um, mm. that I was using uh, pharmaceuticals to treat at the time. Um, I had I had just transitioned out of the military from the warrior transition unit. Um, I had a uh, I'd had a mental break and uh, was uh, was transferred from the uh, the canine unit that I was working in into the warrior transition unit. Um, my wife at the time, she's a veteran as well. Um, she was at home uh, with our with our children, um, and I was stationed in Germany. And she was having suicidal thoughts. She was bulimic. She was anorexic. She was cutting. Um, she was using meth and coke. Mm. Um, I had uh, rescue breathed to resuscitate her uh, twice before mm. the army decided to send me without my wife and kids to Germany because my rotation was up and uh, uh, my dwell time was up and they didn't have any facility in Germany that they felt could treat my wife. So they sent me without my family. Wow. Um, and I fought pretty much the entire time to get back to them the whole while, you know, listening to what was going on back home with my wife and, you know, she was falling apart and, um, her parents were helping to raise our kids and helping to take care of her, but she was just on a downward spiral, you know, because of her own PTSD. Um, uh, and so I, I, I got, I ended up being transferred back into the warrior transition unit, medically retired, started on cannabis, was using that. And it, it was, it was working. Okay. It had allowed me to, um, wean myself off of the pharmaceuticals, which I don't recommend. It was a brutal process. Um, uh, uh, pharmaceutical antidepressants and anti antipsychotics, uh, SSRIs, uh, and so on. They, they are brutal to withdraw from because mm. they change the way that your mind works. They, they change the chemistry of your body. And, um, it, 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 there were times 
where I was banging, literally banging my head against the wall while my kids are sitting on the couch watching TV. And I, I'm, I'm, I'm banging my head against the wall because I just want the voices and the craziness and the pain and the anger in my head to stop. And I'm thinking if I just take my, my uh, psych meds, then, then this is going to, this is going to be okay. I'm going to be, I'm going to be okay. I'm going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Well, then if you take the psych meds, then you're back to just being a, a, a mind numbed out zombie sitting on the couch, you know, for, for 16 hours a day, unable to get up and do anything because nothing is enjoyable in life. It, it, it's, it's like the choice, you know, what's the lesser of two evils. But so I, I went through this, this, oh, this really tough ordeal of, of, of letting go of the psych meds and just hoping that cannabis could hold me up. Mm -hmm. and it did. I was able to help me transition through it. And after about a week of detoxing from the psych meds, I was able to um, actually regain some clarity and start feeling emotion again and positive emotion. Um, but I was still dealing with a lot of PTSD and my wife and I started to trigger each other. Um, I was medically retired. I was at home. I had no job. I wasn't, you know, going out and doing anything. I didn't know what to do. I had just left 11 years of being in the military, you know, I, where I was a military policeman. I was a soldier. I, every day I knew what the mission was, you know, and, yeah. and here now I'm at home in this unfamiliar, you know, territory, I guess you could call it. Yeah. I'm trying to figure out what to do with my life. You know, who am I? What, what? What's the mission now? I think I even, you know, cursed and said it in the movie. I was, I didn't know what to do. I was going to college because it brought extra money into the house. You know, I had mm -hmm. just lost my military paycheck and was waiting on VA, which hadn't kicked in. I was waiting on unemployment. I was waiting on something and I couldn't get a job. I was trying to go to college, you know. And that was our lifeline. And, uh, but then my grades started slipping and um, I couldn't think about school uh, because my mind wasn't there. So, you know, then I'm faced with the added stressor of, well, the grades are slipping because I can't be there. So I'm going to fail my family even more because I can't financially provide for them because I'm going to lose voc rehab. And it all just kind of started piling on top. Yeah. You know, and um, my wife and I started fighting, um, you know, in front of the kids. And it, it just like all of a sudden life was just this chaos. I was mm. having flashbacks. I couldn't drive to school without, you know, being in tears or having to pull off on the side of the road. Um, it, it, I, I was constantly being triggered at home. I was yelling at my kids for making even the slightest bit of noise. I'm constantly looking out the windows for a threat. I'm, I'm making sure that everybody's double locking the doors. Uh, you know, I, I'm, mm. I'm doing head counts of people. I'm getting up in the middle of the night and getting up and checking on the kids, making sure that they're okay, not getting any sleep at all. You know, it, it, it was just, it, it was absolutely a Terrifying. horrendous way to live. And, and, and I brought that added stress and chaos into the house. So the kids are on edge, you know, I'm yelling at them because they didn't brush their teeth. They're going to bed crying and screaming at night. And then I'm downstairs mm. in the basement afterwards going, you know, beating myself up inside going, who, who am I, you know? This yeah, isn't me. What am I doing? But you know, in in the moment, that was that's what I would snap to. You know, I um, I I would be I I would get such tremendous road rage when and if I did have to go out. You know, I'd I'd be cutting in and out of traffic. I'd be owning the road just like I did downrange. You know, and, and it was so ridiculously silly. I, yeah. I would I would follow people 
that were that were doing the wrong thing on the road and yeah. i would follow them within like a foot of their bumper mm. and then i would i would literally get out of my own vehicle and i wouldn't even care like they could have pulled out a weapon and shot me dead right there because yeah. i would get out of my car and i would charge up to them screaming at them Ugh. calling them out for what they did how dare they be such a horrible human Blah, 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 blah. And all I was doing, I didn't know it at the time, all I was doing, I was mirroring who I was inside, how I felt about myself. And I didn't know it. So all this is going on. Cannabis is, is helping me to kind of deal with things a little better, but it was just a Band-Aid at the time. And I, my wife and I were invited in 2015 to the Boulder Can Awards, which was an event to recognize the up and coming businesses in the legal cannabis industry in Colorado. And they wanted mm -hmm. a veteran perspective on how um, the, the cannabis industry was going. And I was a medical patient at the time with a card and, you know, legal and everything. Mm -hmm. um, even, even still doing cannabis, trying to be as legal as possible with military mindset still ingrained in me. Right, right. You know, and feeling like a criminal every time that I'm using cannabis at that point, but still knowing that it was, it was being beneficial. It was, it was helping to kind of curve the edge on a lot of stuff. Um, How did the VA react to you having a, having a cannabis? I card? had to be completely quiet. I still don't speak about it with the VA, with the exception of uh, we just did a, a, a telecast. Uh, a video podcast with the San Francisco uh, VA, which mm. was a little unnerving because the con the whole time I'm going, you know, are they going to pull my family's benefits? Because yeah, you know. But I it, I talked with them uh, and 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 explained the fact that regardless of the fact that psychedelics have uh, changed my life tremendously. It's still a daily battle. You know, this is my life now. My, my entire life is dictated by trying to find and continually use new methods and modalities of healing because it, it, the work is always there. You mm -hmm. know, there's no magic pill. It's, um, and I think that's one of the most beneficial things I learned from the psychedelics. Um, but I digress. Uh, so at the, at the 2015 Boulder Can Awards, um, I was introduced to a gentleman named Ryan LeCompte, a Marine Corps veteran, um, a Marine, who had, uh, he, he had gone to Peru and was followed by um, a news television crew. I think it was 20 Minutes, uh, Lisa Lang, I believe. Uh, they did a documentary, a short documentary film on him, and uh, he went to Peru and did ayahuasca and was able to find healing from his war traumas. Um, and I was able to speak to him at this event, never met him before, never even heard about ayahuasca. And someone came up to me and said, hey, you should go talk to that guy. So I did. And he introduced me to Janine and Luke, um, who, uh, who created, you know, helped mm -hmm. create the, created the film. And uh, they, at first, they didn't want to uh, use me for filming because I was, I was so reserved and so quiet the first time that I had met them. I, I hardly said a word because I was just really withdrawn within myself. Um, they met me a second time, uh, and at, uh, and, and at that time, Matt Kale was there, the other, uh, the other, uh, veteran who's in the film. Mm -hmm. uh, and he was able to, uh, let me use some cannabis because at the time that I met Janine and Luke, I hadn't, I, I hadn't had any cannabis and recently, and I was really withdrawn. So when I, when I was with Matt, 
he let me use a vape pen that he had. And I was able to finally open up and start talking. Um, and that was when Janine and Luke decided to go ahead and, and choose both of us for, for the film. And hmm. um, we, we were blessed to be able to receive a grant from a woman in India that we had never met uh, who paid our way, our airfare and uh, the donation to soul quest in Florida mm -hmm. um, for our first ayahuasca uh, uh, ceremony. And we, we were able to fly out there and uh, I tell you what, man, um, the night before I left, I was upstairs in my closet with my H and K 45 pressed my temples mm. And uh, I, had, I had told myself that if ayahuasca wasn't going to change something that hadn't changed yet, then I was going to come back home and I was going to finish that. Gosh. And I've never since had that thought in my head. Good. Uh, you know, I, I, have, I have rough days. Uh, yeah. There you know there's there's emotion there's life there's ups there's downs there's there's trauma there's pain there's hardship there's but there's also you know the ability now to see the magnitude of joy and love and happiness and life and that it's worth living um yeah yeah, I get it. <laughs> so yeah. So was that your very first experience? Yeah, with man, psychedelics. That my, there, that was my very first experience. I was actually, uh, I was raised uh, um, a uh, evangelical free Christian. Hmm. Uh, I actually went to Thailand and taught uh, English using the Bible before I joined the military, and I was a very straight edge kid growing up you know i i didn't use any illicit anything uh even through the military uh yeah for never once and i i always found myself being the dd most more often than not for my buddies mm. because i wanted to uphold that standard you know yeah. I, I lived that esprit de corps you know we were we were the standard you know as a military policeman as a canine handler you know um and it, I ingrained that into myself and into, into every, every aspect of my life. And I still do in, in various ways. It's just, it's changed now that I've seen how much I was lied to um, about these, you know, whatever you want to call them, psychedelics, entheogens, medicines, you know, it, we, can, we can throw ver vernacular all day long, but the, the fact remains that for certain people, they are healing. Mm -hmm. They help us reconnect with parts of ourselves that we have lost, that we've forgotten about, that, you know, that, that help us to understand more about what this life is and what the meaning of existence is. And that's something that, that I never got even once uh, through, through any of the situations that I went through in my life. And it was, you know, it was, it was a beyond what anyone could read in a book or be told by mouth. It was an experience. Yeah. And once, once somebody experiences something in their life that it, that, you know, it, it alters them. If it's if it's something that's that's lasting, if it's something that's impactful in the moment, it it can become something that that is lasting for the rest of their life. And for me, that's what psychedelics are. They, you know, they they are a reminder of. I get I get these little messages, you know, these little unspoken. Um, things that that just connect me back with the true core of who i am um and they remind me that i need to continue doing the work and when i have slacked off and areas i need to work in 
And yeah, it's it, these these things are are an amazing tool in the tool chest of of healing this human form, mm-hmm. helping to bring back a balance of understanding where we fit in and where we need to fit in and what we can let go of that's hindering us. Um, and, and they, they're not things to be taken lightly in any way, shape or form. They're, they're, you know, these, these, these are powerful tools that used in the wrong context in the wrong way can be frightening. Yeah. You know, and um, I think that, I think that's one of the most beautiful things that I'm seeing in um, this, this new resurgence of psychedelics becoming mainstream um, is that there is a, a push for people to hold on to the sanctity of what this is and to maintain a proper place set and setting uh, for using these, you know, you don't just slam them back in, in your car driving down the freeway, you know, or go to a, you know, go to a club and expect, um, some type of a healing experience. You know, there, there are, it's a very, important thing that they're used in the right context and that there's reintegration afterwards um that there's a a community of people to help with answering questions or uh fears or you know (laughs) even saying no it's okay you're not crazy (laughs) yeah exactly you're you're fine you're fine yeah Yeah. Yeah. have you uh so what would you say is a key to a good experience. And when I say good, I don't mean good trip, bad trip, you know, because a bad trip can be a good experience in the end, right? So what I'm, oh, what I'm asking is, what, is your, what, is, what are your thoughts or advice on what you said, set, setting, dose, uh, integration? What, what do you think are the keys to um, positive outcomes in life as a result of, of going on these journeys? Um, don't try to do a Terrence McKenna dose right off the bat. Um, because it could could not go well. Um, my, my second mushroom experience, um, I was like, well, I've had ayahuasca, so let's go. (laughs) Yeah. Six grams later. I'm on the floor curled up in the fetal position going, I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go there. I don't want to go yeah. there. I don't want to go for hours. <laughs> yeah, that's rough. I, I always say that uh, mushrooms, mushrooms have always been my, my best teachers because they are like that, um, that first sergeant, that drill sergeant, who's going to do nothing oh, but tell are. you the brutal truth. You know what I mean? They're going to punch <laughs> you right in the face and say, here's what you got to learn. Oh, they are. They're, they're a fantastic teacher, but they are a in your face. Okay. You wanted to know, let's, let's yep. go. And, yeah. uh, and, and I, I learned that night that, okay, so great. I've had a, an incredible experience on ayahuasca. That does not mean to take lightly any of the other ones. Um, so <clears throat> my first, um, five MEO uh, experience was it, it was unbelievable um, it, it, it's what really solidified my connection with um, spirit mm. <clears throat> um, it, it was what really showed me that I'm not in control of anything uh, control in a, is an illusion, um, and uh, <laughs> and that's that's a beautiful beautiful thing when it's when it's fully realized. And I haven't even begun yet to fully realize it. That's still the practice. Yeah, uh, I was just shown a glimpse, and then that, now it's my work to figure out, you know, how to balance that um, in in this human understanding of it. Um, it it was, it was, 
beautiful. It was a uh, synthetic 5-MeO, which I, I totally urge people to, if they're going to seek 5-MeO for the protection of the Bufo uh, Alvarius code, uh, I recommend synthetic. Hmm. Um, because I, I fear with the popularity of going mainstream, I fear ha harvesting and, um, you know, destruction of their habitat. Um, so that's one of the, one of the other things is, is as these become more mainstream, uh, recognizing the, the protection of these medicines needs to be done. Um, but anyways, but I digress. Um, yeah, and I'm with you on that because I, I live here in uh, Bufo territory, the Sonoran Desert Toad here uh, in the Sonoran uh, Desert. And um, while right now they're they're technically not endangered, for the last two or three years, I have noticed that the monsoons that are such a big part of their life cycle have been dry. Yes, and, and it makes me very concerned about these toads because. Am too. How's that yeah. going to impact them with with the monsoons stretching further and further apart? You know, yeah. that's a, that that is their life cycle. So how, it is. I that's my concern. So I, I, I'm glad to hear that from from you being ground zero where they where they are. You know that that's something that that is known. You know, and I mean, you live there, so you understand that. But not not many people understand that the monsoons correlate with how these toads live, you know, and 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 what they are, and what's so incredible about them. And yeah, they're amazing, and, and amazing they're, animals. <clears throat> they're incredible. They're, they're they're even looking at them is is a sign of the wonder of this this life in this universe. It is. It is. And, and one of the ironies of these toads, <clears throat> the, uh, their poison is illegal, yet they hop yeah. around the yards of the prisons here. <laughs> yes. You know, so. <laughs> yes, I love it. Yeah. It's, yeah. It's but like, I'm sorry. It's I, like, it, no, it's like the universe laughing at our laws. It is. It is. It's, it's a real big, uh, hey, here to take a look at this, but, yeah. but I, I have caused a digression this time. So it's, um, Oh, that's okay. I love, I love, uh, but I digress is I, I, co I coined that term. I stole it from one of my professors that I really enjoyed. At, yeah. When I was at UCCS. He used that all the time. And I realized that that's me. So <laughs> I was like, yeah, th those are the best that. parts of the lecture, right? <laughs> yeah. Right. No, keep digressing. Uh, that was fun. Yeah. 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 Oh man. But uh, so, where was I? So, yeah, um, the five meo. So I, it was, it was incredible. Um, I, I real, I, I, I realized the split, and I was able to ob observe my ego uh, from a third person or a third view. Mm. Like I don't even know how to say that. Um, yeah. I was able to, from an outside perspective, observe my ego going through the 5-MEO for a little while. And, and I laughed at myself in the absurdity of it. And then all <laughs> of a sudden, I was sitting before just pure white. And, and then I, I wasn't even sitting before it. I, I just was observing just this empty field that was only filled with white. Hmm. And before me was a round cathedral stained glass window that rose up into the white expanse higher than I could see and extended to the left and the right uh, farther than I could see, but I could tell that it was round. Um, and all of the stained glass pieces were moving. <clears throat> they were all just m mechanically shifting places. And some of them were the most grotesque 
hideous things I I had ever experienced hmm. in that moment or, or in my entire life. And I wanted to avert my eyes from them, but I couldn't. And then I could also see some of them were the most beautiful things that I had ever seen and made my heart feel as if it was going to explode out of my chest. Mm. All of them were shifting and moving and shifting and moving. And I realized there wasn't a single empty space. And in that moment, it was another realization of the fact that everything has to exist for any of this to exist. The Hmm. horrible, 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 most atrocious things that we feel we can't even bear have to exist in our lives in order for us to see the mirror effect of the most incredible things that could possibly exist in this life. Hmm. If we're able to just look a little to the left, a little to the right, and see those things too. They all exist in tandem. They all exist in this plane of existence, and they have to for any of it to exist. If yeah, we don't, very interesting. If we don't have darkness, how do we understand what light is? If we don't yeah. have light, how do we understand what darkness is? There has to be a balance, and the universe creates that balance. And the work of human life is to find how to exist in that balance Hmm. and love. Wow. And there was my five MEO and, and, and I, I, I came out of it groveling on my hands and knees saying, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not in control. I'm hmm. not in control. I'm just a witness. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That is powerful. That is powerful. So what you, you alluded to it earlier that you you were able to find happiness and joy after all these experiences, after, after the horror that you went through and the horror that became your life and, and these amazing experiences with ayahuasca and, and mushrooms and five MEO. What, what is life like now? I mean, you mentioned there's still tough times. Um, you don't feel suicidal. You find moments of happiness and joy. You know, is that, is that the way life is? You know, what maybe just give us have, a description of what's going on with you now, these days. I have hope. Um, yeah. I, can, I can see a future. Um, I... I'm learning to love myself Mm. and that is, that's some of the toughest work is, you know, is learning to love myself even through all my mistakes, even through all my wrongdoings, my misgivings, my, my actions that I regret, the memories of things that I wish I had done differently. Um, You know, we, we live, off of our memories more often than not uh how we base what we do in life is is generally based off of the memories of what we've experienced in this life Hmm. um you know how we interact with the world we either wall ourselves off we become incredibly aggressively outgoing you know we we become shy We become leaders, we become followers, we become addicts, we become whatever we become is generally based off of our response to our emotional encounters in life. Who we become is generally shaped by the experiences that we have in life. But at the core of who we are is who we were at the beginning when we were a child before the the world started to shape us Mm. and psychedelics help us to remember that core identity 
before we started transforming into the ego, which is our protective uh, reaction to the world. Our ego is how we exist. You know, I am this person and therefore I have a role. I am this person and therefore I exist in this world and I have a place in this world. And let me tell you why, you know, mm -hmm. we choose so many ways to, to, to prove that we are who we are because it's, it's a protection. It's, it's, it's how we, it's how we have a place to fit in on the playground of life, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we can interact with the other identities, the other egos that are around us that are doing the exact same thing. So how is this like playing out? Break that down. Yeah. And how is this playing out in your life? I know, you know, you, you set it up for us in talking about, you know, the, the anger and the road rage and the fighting and reactions yeah. with your kids. What, what's, what's the family life like today? How, how are the kids doing? How are you doing? Um, you know, is it different? It is different. Um, it's, it's not, you know, leave it to beaver. Um, mm -hmm. but, but it's, it's a continual growth of healing, you know, mm -hmm. um, there were, it, we have, we have a house now that's more put together than it's been in over a decade. Um, you know, and it's, it's a reflection of how we're feeling, but now we're, we're actually putting effort into building this life, building this family, you know, for, mm -hmm. for the first time we have, it, it, it's the little things, you know, that I'm, that I'm going to allude to, uh, we're teaching our kids how to cook. <laughs> um, we're, uh, we're. we took them out of school um, and we're homeschooling them. Um, we are spending time with them. We are um, showing them life that we were so cut off from the ability of being able to do before that none of that even happened. It was just pure chaos. Yeah. So, now, now we are learning with them how to be a family again. Yes. Um, we're opening up to them and being honest with them about what we're feeling and what we're experiencing to show them and hopefully allow them to see that they can do that in return. You know, yeah. uh, we are, we're working on healing ourselves and our family day to day now, whereas before it was a constant destruction. Um, and we'd have glimpses of good things, but then it would just go right down back into the pits. You yeah. Know? Um, it, it, we're no longer having our kids go to bed in tears. We're no yeah. longer screaming and yelling at each other in the house where our entire family can feel that that emotion you know um yeah there there were times where we were fighting so much that the dogs were cowering Ugh. and now we're not doing that and that you know it, it for for some people maybe uh, uh you know that that our life is finding some type of a normalcy again is mm -hmm. like well whoop de do good for you but for us, from where we came from, this is night and day. That's huge. That's huge. You know, my, my wife, she is no longer a smoker. She's no longer using meth or coke. She's no longer, um, you know, a, a victim of her eating disorders or her cutting. She is, uh, she's working now as a, a medical assistant um, and she's received uh, I think three dollars, two or three dollars in pay raises in the past three days, three years hmm. um, just based off of her performance. Yeah. Her work ethic, her life ethic, who she is as a, as a, as a person in her soul is able to shine out now 
and um, and it's being recognized. And nice. she reflects it too. Her self love is at an all time high. You know, she's able to take care of herself. She's able to eat well. She's she's eating better now than she ever did in her entire life. Hmm. I am too. Um, and and we're starting to branch out and find new things that we never would have done before. I took a blacksmithing class <laughs> last. You know, like yeah, uh, just we're we're trying to branch out and do different things and show our kids that that the 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 joy that we hid from that we you know forgot about in life that it exists and as a family we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna branch out and we're gonna find those things yeah we're gonna incorporate those things into our life because they matter yeah they certainly do so that's you know that's that's it's it's when i said the work is never done um it's never done it, it, but what's amazing about these psychedelics is that they remind us to dig in and do the work not to fall back into our old routines and you know be because we can mm-hmm. you know, these these medicines they they give us uh the tools and the knowledge but it's up to us whether we're going to incorporate them into our lives and actually make the changes we can easily slip back into our old routines, our old habits, our old ways very easily and be consumed in the muck and the mire. And yet, even within it, know that there's another way. And that's, I think, even worse. But if we choose to do the work, we can change our lives in incredibly positive ways. You know, um, for instance, I'm I'm blessed to be able to talk to you right now. And that never would have happened in my life if if I just fell back into my old routines and sunk back into my lows and you know the thought of it as just an experience. Yeah. Cuz if we that's something uh to key in on. Uh, psychedelic experiences can be watered down over time. And they can become something that we just talk away as something we experienced. And our, our human intellect can transform an experience that could be life-changing into, oh, you know, yeah, I saw such and such crazy cool thing. Right. And it's our it's a party favor thing that we can talk about, you know, later on down down the road. Or we can internalize the message. And understand that it's the universe reaching out to us in a ridiculously crazy sometimes way. And sometimes that's what we need. Mm -hmm. But it's the universe reaching out to us. And if we listen to that message, our entire life, our entire perspective on life, our entire experience in this life can be completely altered for the better. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I agree. And I'm, I'm super grateful also that you, you know, come on here and share your story. And I know you're going to help a lot of people who are listening to this. Um, before we wrap up, is there anything else that you wanted to get out there? Um, I just want to say psychedelics are not for everyone. You know, these yeah. medicines, they're, they're not for everyone. They are a, the more I have been able to, and blessed to be able to use them, the more I understand how sacred these things need to be treated, how respectfully, you know, even if Mm -hmm. if you don't want to bring, uh, you know, any type of spirituality into them, they have to be respected because they can bring about undesirable uh, effects if taken in the wrong set and setting or if there's no uh, follow-up if there's no reintegration afterwards Um, yeah you know after my first ayahuasca after my first ayahuasca ceremony i came home and there were 
months where I thought I was just losing it. And mm. I, didn't, I didn't know what to think about what I was experiencing because, um, you know, these medicines, the lessons that they can teach us can last for days, even weeks afterwards. Um, and I was blessed to be able to talk to Ryan LeCompte on the phone. And he was able to talk to me and be like, no, nah, brother, no, nah, that totally, totally understandable. Yeah, I understand that. I went through that. This is how you can handle that. To, you know, look at it from this perspective. Um, it, don't just, you know, be like, oh, well, cool. I want to change my life and go grab whatever off of whoever and uh -huh. You know, throw it back and say, well, here goes, you know, find a, a reliable, trustworthy source because they're, they're out there. Um, and a lot of times these medicines, they they reach out to us. And if if it's calling to you, oftentimes it will manifest and find its way to you. Um, but don't just look for whatever, wherever, whenever put some planning, some thought, some respect, some, some just respect. In yeah. Place. Some intention. Some intention. Uh, yeah. Intention in place before you even think about uh, venturing down this road. Um, but you know, uh, everyone has their own path. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm so, so incredibly blessed and thankful that, that I'm, uh, I'm on this path. So, yeah. yeah. And good for you. I really happy for you. And uh, like I said, really grateful you came on and, and shared this story. I think it's definitely a powerful one. And I, again, finally, I once again, encourage people to go and watch the documentary because there's, there's a lot of interesting details in there about your journey and your experiences some details that we didn't need to put here because they are out there. So, uh, Michael, thank you so much for taking your time to do this. Um, really grateful. And, uh, I will catch up with you again out there in the world. Fantastic. Stuart. Thank you. I really, really appreciate it. That concludes this edition of the stoned ape reports. Thank you for listening. Please follow us on Instagram at stoned ape comedy and subscribe to our newsletter at www.stonedapecomedy.com. Again, thanks for listening and catch you next time, Stone Apes.